Hey guys, also welcome to another video of mine. It's Commander Belay, and this is another video of mine that obviously I haven't uploaded since Monday. It has been a while since I've uploaded the Academy Assemble video regarding which line players that I believe should be coming back or be out soon. But today's video, I want to discuss the the reason transfer roundup with regarding Chelsea. Obviously, the international break it's, it's so boring. Thank God the um, Premier League is back tomorrow. It's back, obviously, play Cardiff on Sunday. The preview will be out tomorrow, so make sure you guys do stay tuned for that. But today I want to make a video on Hudson Odoi. Uh, what Sari just basically commented as I speak, he had this press conference. I want to discuss what Sari spoke about Hudson Odoi because um, it's caught, you know, created a lot of controversy on social media. I want to also discuss the rumors regarding Hudson Odoi's contract and what I've heard, etc. And also, I want to, you know, discuss what Frank Lampard was talking about Sari. Now, Getting straight into it before I do get straight into it, sorry. Make sure you do smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new around here, and comment down below your thoughts on Hudson Doy as well. But regarding Hudson Doy, now yesterday it's been all over quite a few publications, including Standard Sport. The writer who does write for Standard Sport, Simon Johnson, who's extremely reliable, is connected to the club, basically say that Chelsea are preparing a hundred K. Uh, £100,000 a week contract offer to Hunter, Callum Hunter-Doy um, after his recent performances they want to keep him at the club especially with the uncertainty of Ian Hazard who's probably might most likely off in the summer um, so basically they've offered him that now if you remember back in January when Bayern Munich were heavily interested in Hunter-Doy they had that £35 million bid rejected Chelsea to offer Callum Hunter-Doy 70k a week he did turn that down which proved me one thing there's a common denominator he's not all about the money he loves playing for Chelsea he doesn't really care about, you know, to a certain, certain extent, the amount of wages he does get. I don't get why Chelsea understand this. They believe that money will solve the issue. I'll just give him more wages. No, the boy wants to play. Give him the playing time. Even if we promised him the game time, we could have just given him 70k and he would have accepted it. Like, we just keep up and up in it for no reason. One thing the club does not understand is the boy wants to play. Play him and he will sign. He loves the club. He's been here since he was eight years old. You know, he's been around the club, he wants to play for Chelsea, but the reason why he handed in that transfer request, the reason why he wanted to go to Bayern Munich, was because he wanted more playing time. He wanted guarantees of his playing time, and ultimately, we couldn't promise him that, so he had to look elsewhere. And suddenly, now that we're panicking, we're actually offering him time. We're knowing that we've probably got a potential transit ban upcoming. We probably also know that Aiden Hazard is off in the summer. We have to keep our prize asset, and by the only way, is playing him. This will lead on me on to my next point. So anyway, we offered him 100k a week. That's according to Standard Sports, so very reliable. Also, Telegraph and Sky Sports they report the same thing. Now, uh, Hudson Doy's camp is more intrigued. You know, they're, they're more convinced to stay now. And uh, with him playing more minutes, obviously, being uh, capped for uh, England as well, being called off for the England national team, playing really, really well. Also playing a lot in the Europa League, you know, slowly working his main into the, into the first 11. They are more convinced that, you know, this contract situation should be wrapped up soon and it looks like Hudson Doy will be signing a contract soon. So that is really good news and that's exactly what I heard as well from what I heard that uh, Hudson Doy's camp, they're, you know, they're slightly leaning towards staying now, they want to sign the contract and they have told Callum Hudson Doy that regardless if he does sign or not, he will not be leaving this summer. Even if he has a year left, the club want to keep him because there is no way in hell the club are going to let Eden Hazard go and Callum Hudson Doy go in the same window. It just does not make any sense. There'll be a huge backlash, not only from the fans, but just from everyone around in the club, at the board, etc. So, Callum Hunter-Doy, he's staying regardless and looks like he will be signing a five-year contract worth 100k a week, which is astronomical, especially the fact that he hasn't even started a Premier League game. But this leads me on to my second point, and that's regarding Mauricio Sarri's comments today. Now, it angered a lot of fans, it angered me a little bit, I'm not going to lie. So, basically, I'll tell you what he said. So, basically, Sarri did have a press conference regarding the Cardiff City game on Sunday, Preview will be out tomorrow. And he was asked about Odoi during the England national team, how he performed. And he said, I wasn't able to watch him much. I only watched 20 minutes of him because he had to watch other players who are also away on international duty. That I can understand. That is fair enough. You know, you've got other players to watch. You have your free time. Mauricio Sarri needs the rest. He's got a lot of stress and pressure. So I can understand that, right? Fair enough, you know. Uh, the fact that he only watched 20 minutes. But this is what angered fans, and especially me. This is what also angered me. Him saying, oh, um, he wasn't very good on the right. He was quite bad on the right. But when he won went on to the left-hand side, he was quite good. Remember, he's only, you know, well, last year when he was 17, he only played 7 to 8 matches. He's now 18, he's played 90, 20 matches. The fact that he's still referring to age really angered me. I mean, if you're good enough, you're old enough. It's as simple as that. I don't get why at this club we have this, this you know, this stigma that, oh... Uh, 
uh, oh, if you're too young, oh no, we don't want to, we don't want to start you. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, a month ago, sorry, coming out and saying, oh, uh, Adore, he'll be ready when he's 22, 23. No, that's not the case. He's not going to waste his, you know, his development years at a club where they're not promising him the game time. You know, when it, when players get to 18, the club don't know how to develop them. It's as simple as that. And that's why we're seeing a lot more players move out online or they move out and they look elsewhere for playing time. And uh, it's getting ridiculous now. Um, like I said, I can understand the fact that he couldn't watch too much in the England national team because obviously um, he has to focus on other players. He has to, you know, research. He has to think about, you know, a lot of stress on his mind. I can understand. But the fact that, you know, making that ridiculous comment saying he wasn't going to the right. In my opinion, he was fantastic on the right. Yes, he is right. He was much better on the left because he's a natural left winger. But he was decent on the right. He was beating this man very, very direct. So he's perfect for the system. And uh, defensively, he's very, very good. You know, he had a very, very good debut for England. I don't understand what's wrong. And uh, the fact that he said, oh, um, you know, He's only 17, he's only 18. The fact that he still refers to age really, really annoyed me. But we'll have to wait and see. You know, um, he wants to utilise Hudson-Odoi more. Obviously, he's to hudson is going to be used more. He did also promise that with the eight remaining fixtures left, he will be definitely be starting minimum two to three Premier League matches, which I thought was fantastic news. I thought that was really, really good news. He needs to be starting from now on, in my opinion. He has to be starting. Um, he's our second best winger. Fuck, simple as that. And uh, yeah, hopefully he will start. He's promised he's listening to the fans now. He's going to utilise him more. And the fact that he was really, really, you know, pleased and satisfied with um, with his energy, his work rate and his discipline at the England national duty. And the fact that he performed really, really well. Bruce is really, really happy with Callum hunter Doyle's performance. So hopefully he does stop more often. Um, but yeah, like I said, he did promise Adoy that he's going to be starting at least two to three matches. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to wait and see if he starts against Cardiff. I be I think he should. I think all the fans would agree on me on this. I believe that he should be starting um, on Sunday against Cardiff. But like I said, it's all about the gaffer. It's the gaffer's decision. So we're gonna have to wait and see on that one. So that's regarding Kyle Matsudo. It's been offered 100k a week, so um, he's looking like he will be signing a contract and staying. So that's fantastic news. And uh, yeah, regarding Sarri's comments, you know, he will be starting two to three matches out of the remaining eight Premier League games. So we'll have to wait and see in that one. Now, the other piece of news is Frank Lampard. Now, Frank Lampard had an interview yesterday. He was asked about Marisha Sarri. Um, and uh, I thought he had the nail on the head now. The first thing he mentioned was um, he was saying that Marisha Sarri, if he thinks he's a top manager, he just he needs to be given more time to basically implement his philosophy and, you know, changing Chelsea from a more defensive uh, style team to a more attacking style team. It's going to take time. But he did say the Premier League, you need to be adapting. You need to be adapting so you have multiple systems in your head. During a team, you can't just have your way of playing and ignoring your position. You have to be changing your style, not style, but changing the way your tactics and the way you set up. Uh, your lineup or your formation so that you know you can counteract the opposition so you can outsmart them, you can tactically beat them obviously unless you know you have the personnel and that's the thing we haven't got the personnel so when it comes to these entire in in-game management situations you need to be able to be adaptable you need to adapt to your opposition so you can get the best out of your team so you can win the, the game obviously when it comes to you know implementing the style and getting the right personnel you have to rely on the board and uh, you know the the transfer windows to be able to make those transfers. Obviously, that's the club's decision. That's the club's fault. Uh, you know, you know my thoughts on the board. I think that the complete structure of the, of the whole club is all is all completely wrong. It's a complete tip in a mess. Think about this way: we have spent the same amount of money as Man City since 2016. Yet one team is going for the quadruple, and the other team is sitting in sixth place, scraping for UCL qualification. It tells you a lot. We have no DF, um, director of football. We have no direction of where the club wants to go. The short-termism of higher and second, higher and second is finally catching up with us. And the two Premier League titles that kind of paper the crack is finally also catching up to us. An owner that can't be getting into board. Um, into the into the country and the board that is completely clueless and has no clue what they're doing. It's really really coming into play now, and obviously that's the club's decision. Obviously they have to make the right choices about to back Sari and you know get the personnel that he needs to to play his football, to play his, his system. But like Frank Lampard was saying, he needs to be given time to implement system. He's beginning up enough transfer markets like Klopp was to you know purchase the players and get the players that suits his team, suits his system, and is the right personnel. And that way he can play his football. But up until then, he needs to be having Plan B. He He's about having different formation, different tactics. So when he comes against opposition, he doesn't get out tactics. And uh, you know he's you know he's, he's a smart man. He's one of the best managers out there to be able to adapt and uh, change the way he plays so we can get the three points, so we can win the game. Because these last eight games are cup finals. They're crucial. So uh, we need to make sure that we do win all these games. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be look, it's looking tight now for the top four race. You know, I think we did, we should start putting our eggs in the Europa League basket. Obviously, don't completely give up on the Premier League because anything can happen. I believe there's gonna be more twists and turns until the end. And the Europa League is definitely an easier route, especially with the uh, 
you know the route to the final but uh, we're gonna have to wait and see in that one but um but yeah uh, like i said if you did enjoy this video don't forget to smash that like button subscribe to my channel if you're new around here i'll see you guys for my next video peace